Greetings from CI Live in Denver, Colorado. I'm Mark LaLiberté with Construction Instruction. And welcome to today's session on Balanced Ventilation Systems, brought to you by Brown. Now, Balanced Ventilation Systems, such as Heat Recovery Ventilators, HRVs, or Energy Recovery Ventilators, ERVs, can easily be installed using the house's existing HVAC duct system as a means to distribute the fresh air. Now, this process can reduce energy demand while maintaining a safe and comfortable moisture balance and providing a source of continuous, fresh, filtered air for the occupants. However, before planning this upgrade project, there are a few considerations that must be made. Now, let's review a checklist of considerations before installing a new ventilation system. First, the ventilation device must be located in an area where the temperature remains between 50 degrees and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The installation location should account for any noise considerations like sleeping rooms or family rooms. The installation location must allow for service access as much as possible and limit overall duct length, routing issues, and any obstacles. Select an appropriate installation method, return to return, return to supply, or a dedicated return system, and there'll be more on this shortly. The location of the power outlet for the unit a drain location, if required, primarily used for an HRV. The location of the exterior air inlet, especially the distance from any other exhaust source. Now let's review the equipment selection, parts and tools needed to successfully complete the installation. Choose the equipment's ventilation capacity for the specific house size, number of bedrooms, and occupants. Unit configuration, top or side port model, based on installation location and duct routing configuration. Controls required, timer, humidistat, smart controller, or compatible existing controls. Insulated flexible ducts between the unit's stale air exhaust and the fresh air intake. Exterior hoods with insect screens or an engineered integrated tandem hood. Manometer or pressure gauge to balance the system and other miscellaneous contractor tools. The intake and outlet of a balanced ventilation system require an area on the exterior of the building to exhaust stale air from the house and bring in fresh air from outdoors. It is important to identify a location for the fresh air intake that is at least 10 feet from any combustion exhaust outlet and at least six feet from any other exhaust air location, including the stale air exhaust from the balanced ventilation device. Additionally, Brown has developed a unique two-in-one intake and exhaust hood for use with lower flow HRVs and ERVs, less than 110 CFM, that combine both the fresh air intake and the stale air exhaust into one six-inch penetration. This engineered solution is manufacturer approved and eliminates the need for a second wall penetration. Now let's discuss the three typical installation options for balanced ventilation systems. In all of these examples, we're going to use the existing ductwork to deliver the fresh air throughout the house. In this first detail, a dedicated return duct or ducts will be added to pull air from the main body of the house, usually a hallway or other open areas as shown in the details we see here. In this configuration, the fresh air supply is drawn in from outside, passed through the filter and heat exchange core, then delivered into the return air duct of the air handler. The air then proceeds through the air handler and the filter to be distributed throughout the house. The air handler fan can be set to run in sync with the balanced ventilation system for the best distribution efficiency of fresh tempered air. Another installation option is to integrate both the supply and the return of the balanced ventilation system into the HVAC duct system, eliminating the need for installing a dedicated return duct. In this case, the stale air is drawn from the HVAC return air ductwork. The preconditioned fresh outside air is introduced into the HVAC supply air duct. As we see in this diagram, it is important to keep the return side connection to the balanced ventilation system at least 10 lineal feet from the air handler fan. Additionally, an elbow needs to be placed into the supply air duct, pointing downstream to reintroduce the fresh air. Now these inclusions are to aid in the balancing the unit, as the air handler fan is typically running in concert with the ventilation system. 
A third effective installation option, depending on the available exposed ductwork, is to connect both the stale air return and the fresh air supply to the HVAC return ductwork. Now again, no connections should be made within 10 feet of the air handler fan, and a minimum of three feet should separate the two connections. Now one advantage of this simplified option is that the fresh tempered air can be run through the air handler filter. As such, it is assumed that the air handler is running on low speed when the balanced ventilation system is operational. In summary, it is important to remember when evaluating ventilation options, it's important to determine the ventilation rates best suited for the house based on size and occupancy. Now, don't rely on natural or unintentional air leakage to provide fresh, acceptable air quality. Use balanced ventilation systems to provide fresh, preconditioned, filtered air as a preferred indoor air quality strategy. Consider equipment type, location, and control options. When it comes to installation, Keep it simple. Always balance the system. Measure and adjust the flow rates to the intended ventilation rates. This information is covered in the installation guide and balancing details are provided directly on the unit. It's really quite straightforward. Lastly, educate the homeowners about proper operation and maintenance of their HVAC equipment. Thank you for watching part one of this balanced ventilation series brought to you by Brown. In the next video segment, part two, we complete the installation of a balanced ventilation system in an existing house. So the first thing about a ventilation system is to have a known location where we can have good quality air. So this house, fortunately, again, I said before, it met an Energy Star guideline before that required ventilation. This is my ventilation intake. It's got a supply air ventilation duct that runs into the return. It's about the right height off the ground. Typically, you want to be about 18 inches off the ground. But you also don't want to be anywhere near any combustion sources or combustion outputs on the building. They are fortunately all on the north side of the building. So we're going to work with this. We're going to use the one hole. We're going to use Brown's Duo system that exhausts and supplies the fresh air into one connection. So pretty slick idea um, from them. And you'll see when we put that in, it's going to be one, one hole in the wall in a finished boot. So, as luck would have it, nearly all of the basements in this neighborhood are finished, and so we have this small room to work with. We have a new two-stage furnace. Uh, we've got a steam humidification system. We have a four-inch MERV-13 media filter, and right behind me is where we're gonna put this balanced ventilation system. We've already added a power outlet, so we had the electrician come in and take care of that part of the business. And how we're gonna connect this system now, this is the only exposed ductwork that we can get because they're finished ceilings everywhere else. We're gonna pull into the return directly above me. So we're gonna pull air from the house in the return. This is one of the prescribed methodologies of, of connecting this ERV. And we're gonna dump the air back in at the return over here so it'll go through the filter, etc. We will be utilizing the furnace blower to help distribute that balanced ventilation air as well. So let's get to work. So we've cut that duct free on the other end to put the duo um, exhaust and supply hood in outside. So what I'm doing is I've got this six inch flex duct that was the old ventilation duct and we're just pulling it free through the uh, opening. We have a rope tied onto it and we're going to pull back with the other equipment. So we're making really good progress. This is going faster than we thought and anticipated that it would. Uh, we've put actually a four inch inlet into the return. So this is our fresh air to building. This will be our exhaust air from building right above me. And these are my ducts to go to the outside. We have a bay and again, finished basement above, but we've got a bay all the way through here. We're just gonna pull this rope on through with the part of the duo connected to the outside hood and we're gonna be ready to roll here. All right, so uh, pretty quick work of this. We removed the uh, six inch duct that was here for the fresh air ventilation system. We attached two new five inch ducts to this duo um, hood. So this will be my exhaust port. This will be my intake port. We're just ready to stick it into the building here. And it snaps right into place. Then I've got a screw hole on each side. One, two, three, four. 
Right, here we are. We've got the ERV 70T. T stands for top ports, and it's again going to be hung from the joist up above here. Uh, real simple. So as we unpack this, uh, we do have the instructions here. We've already been referring to that, and I'm going to set those right in a safe spot. We'll leave those with the homeowner as well. Uh, just some very simple foam blocks here that we pull out. And we've got our um, chain, springs, connector, and miscellaneous parts. These cords go around our, our supply, our connections to outdoors. So the unit, pretty lightweight, small 70 CFM ERV. Uh, and here we have it. As you can see, I'm hanging on with one hand. So we move the box here, and it's going to orient itself there and right up in that space. So besides having so many different box configurations and port configurations from the top to the side, one thing that, that Brone has done a great deal is taking feedback from contractors on installation. So here's a, a pre-installed, the chain will come, we're going to install the chain to the ceiling, etc. It has an isolation spring for vibration included in that kit. And then a really cool thing, rather than trying to figure out how to screw something to the box, etc. There's little tabs right here on the side. And all we have to do is just take a, for example, a putty knife in here, just slightly bend it out, and once our chains are hanging down, we'll come back at this and we're just going to take that chain loop and just wiggle it in right there, and that's our hanging point. And then we just basically take the slack up and install the spring in there for any vibration not to be transferred to the floor. So it's about quick, it's about easy, and thinking about how contractors don't always have tools or things at their disposal all the time. All right, pretty straightforward. We're checking for level now. Um, it's mostly going to be if something has a drain that it's real appropriate that it's level, but for motor function, etc. Um, so we're pretty much dead on here as far as as far as level. Uh, we can check across these ports as well, and it looks like we're pretty much rock solid here. We just counted links on the chain, same links for the spring. So we're set there. Power cords hanging off the back, which we're going to plug into the side wall over here and we're ready. These are our outdoor ducts and then we've got our connections here. So we're just going to connect ducts and then uh, we're going to go through and connect and interlock this to the furnace and away we go. It's, it's important to remember that we want to have an insulated flexible duct um, with these, especially in cold climates. Uh, so that's my exhaust air out back here, again my fresh air in. Those are both with the insulated R8 flexible duct. You can use six as well. But it's important that we also look at how this collar is and the, the actual jacket material uh, comes down and there's a collar installed, which you'll see in just a second, which wraps around and seals uh, this, this mylar insulation, the reflective insulation, tightly around here to keep any indoor air from coming up here and condensing on that pipe. And that's the big thing. We don't want to have condensation off that pipe while we're using the flex duct. I also, we have such a close configuration uh, to the blower. We're, we're meeting the specs, but at the same time, we put this duct off of a 90 in here. We did use an insulated flex duct. My concern is on high fan speed that we might get some motor noise in there. I'm not sure, but just as a good precaution, we've put an insulated flex duct on this part here. As you'll see, this one does not need to be insulated at stale air from the building. What we're worried about is when we're pushing, particularly this one, if cold air from outside, my fresh air feed, has, comes in contact with warm moisture in the building, I'll get sweating on that duct. So that's the big one. The rest of these are less important. Indoor, uh, so outdoor air, uh, stale air to outdoors, fresh air from outdoors, insulated, the rest of them, not a big deal. So my last two connections, and I've routed this one up here into the ceiling, and they go right to the top port on the unit. This one will come in here. I'm going to take that one last to give me some working room here. And we want to make sure that our, our we've saved enough insulation, which we have, and we cut this to, um, to go all the way around this metal as well. So that is well in place, and we're ready to pop this one in. There is a balancing damper here. We've made sure that we didn't have an obstruction the way that we crimped that pipe. So we should be good there as well. And we are ready to wrap this one around. We could put some screws, but I'm worried about it. So we're going to use a very robust mastic back tape here and press it very well into place. And we'll check and make sure we've got a very good seal there. So we're going to make sure our insulation then neatly covers. that metal portion of the duct. So here is this cord, very handy from an installer's point of view. This cord then is a cinch that will go around 
and it plugs in right here. It'll hold that flex duct into place. Really handy from an installer perspective of not having to grab another zip tie right now. Nice, nice seal. Still have access to that balancing damper right here. So we want a nice tight seal that all the way around. That's very nice. Coming together very well. So my last duct, which we're going to put into place here, and that one's just going to go right into here over the collar. There's not a balancing damper in this one. We'll also put one more support right, right there. We've put one in. I simply just grab one of my handy zip ties, wrap it around. Nice tool that we use here in the fields, this zip tie <coughs> puller cutter. They're pretty handy. <coughs> All right, so we're gonna actually use the furnace to actually control this two-speed ERV. And you can also use the control board that's on this ERV. It has a high and low speed as well. That's what we're gonna activate with this furnace. Nice thing is for our, our low voltage connection, uh, we've got just from the manual, just the two connections and the connector right here is supplied with the unit. And all we're gonna do at this point is we're just gonna reach back here, line, <coughs> line it up, and it's all set so that connector then plugs directly into the side of the unit and we are ready to go. Well, we're just double checking the last pieces here. We've just connected the unit. With this Brone unit, there are uh, three or four different control options that can be either wired directly into this unit the same way that we've done here. Um, or uh, there's, again, a button right on the side to operate this in either the 40 CFM setting or the 70 CFM setting. So you can do it with a controller, without the controller. And again, in this case, we had an air handler that had a very sophisticated controller that runs an ASHRAE 62.2 uh, algorithm to, uh, to actually uh, control the ventilation system. So that's what we've done. So the last and most important step is to balance this unit. And, and the protocol to balance the unit, we're actually going to use a manometer um, or magnahelic gauge, if you want to call it that, but it's a digital manometer. It's just a, a little bit of push and pull is all we're going to do here. Um, all we need is just a simple screwdriver. And to open up these balancing ports up on top, one is here and one is right back here. We've completed our balancing procedure really quick. Um, what we're doing is we're taking a digital manometer we could actually access both channels and be even a little bit faster. Uh, this is my stale air from outside, so coming from the return to outside, air handler is now running at 325 CFM continuous. We're on the 70 CFM setting on the air handler, um, or on the, on the ERV, sorry. And what we've got is with that around 214, we're just right about uh, at about 65, 67 CFM uh, exhaust air from the building. And when we reverse the ports, very simple, we're just going to measure across the other side. Um, we're at about 70, 72 CFM of supply air. So we're pretty close on balance, and um, that went very quick. We've got just some screw-in-place dampers. You just adjust the dampers, and you're pretty much ready to go at that point. So very quick setup. Again, this was a, a very compact and very simple install in this particular retrofit application and I know that the homeowners are going to be extremely happy uh, when they start to feel the benefits of good indoor air quality with this unit.